Well, thank you, Joe. This has really been a joy for me to participate in the organizing of this. Helen has been fabulous to work with. And I just can't thank Philippe and, by extension, Tom, who I understand will join us later, for the, as always, great collegiality that the Met shows as we come in here from the Frick, something of an interloper, but always happy to work together as we uh, bridge that little distance of 10 blocks up and down uh, Fifth Avenue. I'd also very much like to thank the Samuel H. Kress Foundation, Max Marmer, its president, and Rick Beinecke, its chairman, for supporting this study day. I know this is very much in accordance with the mission of the Kress Foundation, but they did act on a moment's notice to say, yes, we'd be delighted to support this, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, I think I'd like to start by giving you just a little word about the genesis of this study day, which is a little out of the ordinary, perhaps, because it all started when Helen and I were having a conversation at a gathering at Emily Rafferty's house the day after this exhibition opened. And I was, of course, congratulating her and complimenting her on what a superb job she had done and how she had really, she and all of you curators, had given us a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see these remarkable, I know far from random, but seemingly random juxtapositions of the, uh, that showcase the uh, encyclopedic nature of this museum. I commented to her that it really seemed to me almost like walking through a large, wonderful, princely Kunstkammer. And then she looked at me quite knowingly, I'm sure you're all familiar with this look, um, and said, well, but Inga, it really is a very American collecting taste. So on hearing that, the light bulb went off, and I thought, well, perhaps our Center for the History of Collecting in America and you should team up to do a study day. So here we are. Now, I have to admit that when Helen said that this represents a very American collecting taste, I didn't exactly know what she meant. <laughs> so I went home scratching my head, thinking, what is she getting at here? I'll go for it, but I really don't know what she's trying to get at. And I recognized, of course, the divergent uh, taste of Americans in general, the, uh, our openness to the cultures of others. That certainly would be a given to make this an American collecting taste. But I thought perhaps there's something more to it. Um, I know Helen will talk a little bit about that um, equal opportunity, if you will, aspect of American collecting taste in just a minute. But then it occurred to me that actually one uh, almost unique aspect of American collecting, I'm now going to embark on some sweeping generalizations, which I hope will invite you to contradict me and get the conversation going. Um, one, one thing that I note, note about American collecting is that Americans rarely inherit their collections. They tend to build collections. And then after they've built them, they tend to give them away or in the most extreme instances, they don't even own them. They ac acquire in order to give them away in support of public institutions. So this remarkable coupling of personal collecting and uh, display of art for the public good, I do think is very much an impulse of this country and the collectors we have here. And it actually goes back even further than many people think. It goes to, back to our, the early days of our republic, even before our British exemplars uh, uh, established the National Gallery of London. And as early as 1822, there were collectors calling for the establishment of a national museum in the United States. So this wish to showcase art for the public good, for the edification and betterment of the citizenry, is really something that is quite an American collecting taste. And, uh, and then, of course, we are so open to displaying cultures, uh, the art of, of people beyond our own national school. This is very different from the Dutchman who will only collect Dutch art, the Italian who only collects Italian art. And this, too, is so suited to display in the museum environment. So this is really just one thread, this inheritance versus building, uh, that I thought we could carry through as we now look more specifically at the various modes of acquisitions and donations that have built this remarkable display that is just, of course, the tip of the iceberg of the uh, works of art acquired during the De Montebello years. 
So I will now um, pass the baton over to Helen, who I can't even find, there she is, uh, who will say a few words and then introduce um, Philippe to you too, as if he needs an introduction.